so one of the first things we'll see uh, uh, Bethany uh, talk about in, 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 in that part of, of the chapter is she says, I live and die by my word and my actions. That's powerful. That's powerful. You know, two days ago, I was sharing with one of my mentees, right? And uh, we had a time in the evening on, uh, on that'll be Friday, Friday night. Yeah. And I was just telling him the same old story about the fact that, that knowledge is not power, but knowledge is potential power. Applied knowledge is the kinetic power, the real power, you know. And in all that discussion, he kind of saw me talking about action, 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 action. And he kind of took note of that, you know. And that's the truth. I'm an action person, right? I just do it because what you don't do, you, you, you don't initiate Right. I can tell you everything I'm telling you right now. If you, all you do is hear it and store it in your head, it's useless. Right. It will not help you. Right. It, and again, all I'm telling you right now is not for you to feel. Oh, all right. I'm not here to make you. You give me a name. It's a good person. It talks well. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here so that you can take action. The reason I'm doing this is to give you something that will steer you to do something in your life to make your life better. If you don't get that thing, that 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 action to take, and you don't take that action, then this time is useless, right? This time is not to store knowledge. It's to get you to move, get you to do something, get you to move and move your life forward, right? I'm not here to fill your head up. I'm here to open your heart, open your mind to new possibilities and that you do something about it, right? So uh, words are powerful, actions are powerful. I love the way uh, Bethany put it there. He says, I live and die by my word and action, right? Because we all do. We all do by the words we say and the ones we don't say. The things we do, and the things we don't say, right? Words run the cosmos, not intentionality. I mean, you can be intentional for all you want. Oh, I intend to farm. Oh, I, I intend to go to school. Oh, I intend to do business. I intend to invest. That's useless. That's like wish. Wishes are not awesome. They're useless, right? It's not the, what you wish for. It's not what you intend. It's what you do. Is what you say. That is what makes a difference, right? So your words are powerful. Your actions are powerful. Use them. Use them. Use them. That's what runs the customers. That's what makes things happen. That's what makes things happen, right? Use them. Use them. Speak the word. Uh, uh, make the corrections. Talk to people. Give the instruction. Get it, get the people moving, get them doing something. That is how you get the cosmos. That's how you get nature. That is how you get the universe to walk in your favor. That is how you get God to walk in your favor, right? You need to hold yourself responsible for your words. You need to hold yourself responsible for your actions as much as you hold others responsible for their words and responsible for their action. Right, I love the way Maya said it. Maya says, if someone shows you their color, right, believe them the first time. Because I know people, I know myself, not necessarily by my intentions, it's by the words I say. Right, it's by the words I say, it's by the things I do. Let nobody fool you. Once someone says something, believe it. They might come and correct it later, but something in them made them say it. When someone does something, believe it, because something in them made them do it. They might try to correct it later, but there is a seedling of that action, of that word inside. And you'd be a fool if you don't take it serious, right? Don't forget, uh, Sun Tzu tells us about the, the, the art of warfare. For you to win, you must know yourself. And yourself gets revealed by your words, your action. You must know the enemy or the competitor gets revealed by their words and their action. 
If you know the two, you're guaranteed success in every warfare. If you only know one, you're not guaranteed success in every warfare. For every one you, you win, you lose. If you know neither of them, it's failure altogether. Right? So take note. Take note of your words. Take note of, of, of what you do. They reveal who you are. Right? And I do a lot of this um, personality uh, talks, learnings, uh, teachings, as much as I'm learning. And it's amazed me. You know, I used to think I was I used to think I was queer, you know, I was, uh, what I mean, what I mean is I used to think that I was strange. I probably came from another universe, but the more I did studies and got teachings and personality traits, the more I saw that I wasn't I'm well studied. There's nothing strange about me. Whatever I do, I have a lot of other people doing the same thing, right? You know, we all have a, a network in, in, I mean, my workplace, we call the quiet leaders. You know, it's a group of introverts, right? It's built on, based on Susan Cain's book, Quiet. You know, and you'd be surprised how many people look like me, how many people think like me, how many people see things the way I see it, you know? And I, I, I get to know that as I, as I feel the test. It's all by my words, my action. They show who I am the way I respond to things, right? So I'm able to know who I am, right? I'm writing a series here being the beginning of the year. And I put down some things I learned from Miles Monroe uh, on the way to be successful in life, which is knowing your identity, knowing your assignment. Right now, because on the first one, knowing your identity, I'm trying to do some write-up on the uh, big five model which are the big five traits for personality classification. Uh, I mean, I, I, I sent out the fifth on that in that series today, this morning, you know, talking about the five uh, different traits, right? Uh, which would be conscientiousness, uh, agreeableness, neurotism, open, uh, openness, and the last one would be extraversion. I mean, you need to know your tendencies, right? They're there. They're there. There's no use deceiving yourself, right? It's ignorance. You have tendencies. That's not to say you're a prisoner to your tendencies, but if you don't know them, you can't control them. You need to know your tendencies so you can have the right action plan to use them and not have them use you. But if you don't know them, then you can't use them because you can't work or control that which you don't understand. Right, so it helps to know what your tendencies represent, what your words represent, what your actions represent. It gets to know yourself, so you know that whether left to your your instincts is pushing you in the in the in the part of success or not, right? Because we don't know where it's taking you. <laughs> Most probably not taking you to the right place. But when you know what your tendencies, your instincts left on their own way is taking you then you can begin to then make corrections to make sure that it's not just taking you anywhere, but it's taking you to where you want to go, where you want to go. You know, that's important of knowing uh, your personality, right? Uh, because if you, if you know it, then you can use it, right? But it also, also thing, like I say, is also know that of the people around you so that you can be able to know how to relate to them better, Right. In marriage, we talk about the the uh, the five five love languages, right? It's also a personality description, right? That if you know the love language of your spouse or the people around you, they know how best to relate with them the way they want to be related with, right? You know, so and you know that from their actions, their words, that helps you, right? So that's one way you can use that. You know, you can use it to defend yourself also, you know, uh, in a workplace, have some people who are pretty much showing, I can see who they have and what they're doing and what they're saying, you know, yet the, the seeming popular word is assume good intent. And I had to tell them in one meeting, I said, hey, man, if I, <laughs> there's no use deceiving myself to assume good intent when I'm already seeing the bad intent. Right, I believe Maya more than any other person. Right, he says, if I see the intent, I should 
what we're talking about in this part of the book is of need, need to be able to handle the truth. If, if someone has shown you a bad intent, believe it. Then, and that's not to say you go fight the person while you're not the pig. You don't go into the mart to fight to the pig. You're going to get there to yourself. But get the right strategy to be able to address that person, address that thing without you getting sold, right? And that's the importance of information. When you have the information, you can, you can plan your strategy, all right? Right, you're not just... Uh, you're not just doing things uh, blind with, in blindfolds. When you know what you what you are up against, find a strategy that will help you to still be sane while addressing the insanity. Right, addressing insanity doesn't mean you need to be insane. Right, it's keeping your sanity and being able to address the insanity. That's important. That's maturity, right? Everybody can be insane with insanity. A small child can do that. But maturity is the ability to address insanity without being insane, right? So, and that's the importance of being able to classify, understand the people, the, the things around you. So you can be able to uh, come up with the right strategy to address them without losing yourself.